Hi, I'm Ben, and today we are talking Oscar power rankings for Best Supporting Actor. I've got 20 true names, and we are going to do this in 20 minutes. Essentially, what I've done is I've broken down these 20 true names, who I believe all to be in for your consideration for this year's Oscar ceremony, all in the category of Best Supporting Actor. I've broken them down by studio focus, narrative, academy status, screen time, buzziness, bias, and after all that, we averaged those numbers out. So I've got 22 names for a lot of them. I'm actually not going to go into great detail. I have them all sorted out for categories. The fun thing about a power ranking is they literally, you know, you rank them as the season goes along and you see who is and who isn't performing up to the need to get an Academy Award. So 22 names. I'm getting all set right now. And we are about to begin. So put the time on the clock right now. Now, 20 minutes starting now. So first category, I got Ben's for your consideration. These are two names that I wish were in consideration. They do not seem to be in consideration this year. Number 22, I have Chris Hemsworth for his work in Furiosa, a Mad Max saga. I think he's great in this movie. He had so much light to this movie. There is so much comedic value that he brings. There is a dialogue heaviness that is so unusual for the Mad Max films. And so it really just changes what we think a Mad Max film can be. Thought he was great. Coming in at 21, I have Jesse Plemons for Civil War. Everyone just seems to agree on this performance. This film from Alex Garland is very controversial. However, the Plemons performance, if you like this movie, this is the best scene in the movie. If you dislike this movie, this is the best scene in the movie. Plemons is a beloved actor. I wish he had more consideration. Next category, we have In Competition with Oneself. We have three names here. Essentially, these are all actors that are not really in consideration just because I think other actors in these movies are in more consideration. So number 20, I have Carlos Diaz for Conclave. And number 19, I have John Lithgow for Conclave as well. The reason John Lithgow is 19 and Carlos Diaz is 20 is just simply... Uh, John Lithgow is more of a famous name. It's as simple as that. When you're grading on studio focus, narrative, academy status, screen time, buzziness, bias, all that, like... Yeah, they're going to be a little bit more biased towards Lithgow, I think. So that's why I have Lithgow coming in at number 19. I think just ultimately the reason none of these are getting in is simply because I think there's another actor in Conclave who's more likely to get focus with the for your consideration spend in coming in 18 same logic and this is also a performance we haven't seen yet it is joseph quinn in gladiator 2 simply put the reason quinn is he here is he has less star power than pedro pascal and denzel who seem to be competing in this said category so i just see it being an uphill battle who knows maybe it all changes so we've done like five names right there Number 17 and 16, I have these in the category of category fraud, question mark. Reason they are in here is because I am not sure if they actually belong in this category. And I am basing this list. I got my list of everyone in contention. Clayton Davis does a piece for Variety where he kind of ranks through everyone. Kind of similar format to this. Uh, the difference is I don't actually look at his rankings. I look at basically everyone eligible on his list. And I saw Gabriel LaBelle and Bill Skarsgård on this list. Uh, number 17, I had Skarsgård for Nosferatu. I just, I'm not sure if this would be the leading performance. I almost feel like he's the titular character, so it'd be weird for him to be the supporting performance, but I guess Nosferatu isn't in the first 1920s film a lot. Number 16, Gabriel LaBelle. I was just curious when was the last time Davis updated this. I know he saw this film, if I'm correct, at Telluride. So maybe this is just the case of Gabriel LaBelle is actually now uh, in Best Actor, which is the category I would assume he is, but just in case he's not, I threw him on this list. Number 15 and 14, I have this one, and this is such a stupid category name. I have this called In Need of Stands. This is essentially performances that have come out that have gotten some critical acclaim that definitely seem to have some momentum going forward, but they just need an audience quick and they need someone to kind of champion this movie. Number 15, I have Peter Sarsgaard for September 5th. I believe we last saw Sarsgaard in his performance for uh, the Jake Gyllenhaal TV show, Presumed Innocence. That's the name of the show. Critically acclaimed performance out of there. I hope I have the right Sarsgaard for that. Uh, September 5th premiered, if I'm correct to tell you right, 
Good reviews, but is it going to be enough to get over? I'm not sure. Number 14, J.O. Sanders, His Three Daughters. I am losing confidence in this movie the longer it goes out. And I do want to say I am no longer on social media, or I should say I am no longer on Elon Musk Twitter. Just don't want to support that man anymore. But the thing is, so I am on Reddit. I am on a lot of the subreddits, and I'm just not seeing a lot of J.O. Sanders support. I'm not really feeling the buzz for his three daughters. Usually you can kind of tell which movies are catching on. So I'm just not buying this movie. I'm not picking up that it's getting a general consensus. So that's why they're at 15 and 14. This one is a long list. I have one, two, three, four, five, six names on it. I call it a complete unknown poking fun at the film, a complete unknown. One of the actors from that movie is on this list. I'm actually going to start getting into some grading in a second. Number 13, I have Stephen Graham for Blitz. Reason he's number 13 is just simply Blitz still doesn't have a premiere date. I don't think it's premiering at New York. It may be a premieres at the London Film Festival, which I believe happens October. But at this moment, I'm just still not sure about this movie and about this performance and about the size. Too many question marks for me to feel sure on it. Number 12, kind of the same reason it is Willem Dafoe for Nosferatu. Now, I think Dafoe has the star power, and this is a type of performance that fits so well within Dafoe's range that if this movie is great, which I have high hopes for this movie, then you could see Dafoe getting the rare genre pick from the Academy Awards. Defoe just feels like the actor that if someone was to get celebrated for Nosferatu, it would make sense for a Defoe type performance to get nominated. Number 11, and this is where I actually start having some numbers backing me up. I have Pedro Pascal for Gladiator 2. Assuming that he is really the main antagonist in this movie, filling the role that Joaquin Phoenix did in the first movie, uh, factors that work well for Pedro Pascal, I scored him high with a uh, studio focus he got he got 3.5 narrative 3.5 big one is screen time i gave him a five for screen time as you can see on the screen right now simply put i think he is going to be the actor if he is really the main antagonist he will probably be the second highest uh in terms of runtime so i just feel really confident about that everything else it's kind of a wash right now we still don't know if this movie is going to be good coming in at number 10, this one's such a dick move. I kind of feel bad for having it in this category. I put Clarence Macklin for Sing Sing. Why is he in this category? Because this performance is not a complete unknown. People have seen this movie, or supposedly they've seen this movie. I don't know what A24 is doing with this movie's release. I think this movie technically came out in July. I didn't get the chance to see this movie until recently, like... Uh, I think it started premiering in Sacramento like two or three weeks ago. And even then, it's only like two showtimes and one of them during the workday. Like I just haven't had the time to go out to see it. And that's kind of the phenomenon I'm hearing across the world. I, I'm reading the social media. It just seems like a lot of people still haven't gotten the chance to see this movie. So that's where I'm starting to get worried where I'm just like, this movie needs to get some momentum and people need to be talking about this movie. And it certainly does not have the momentum past lives had coming out of the summer for a 24th last year. So that's where I'm a little worried about uh, Clarence's chances for seeing sing just the fact that no one's seemingly seen this performance uh, yet, and it doesn't seem that Sing Sing is getting momentum. Number nine, who this category is named after it is a complete unknown. I did grade Edward Norton, as you can see on the screen right now. What does he have in his favor? I gave him a huge one in terms of of Academy status. He is a Hollywood icon, not quite the Nicholson's, not quite the Harrison Ford's, not quite the Tom Hanks level, but still very well respected. Uh, screen time, you can see that's kind of where he lowers out right now. Uh, I just, I don't know what to say on his screen time right now. He might not be in it. And same with Buzz. Right now, it feels like all the buzz and focus of this movie is really around the Chalamet performance. So I'm questioning if it's going to be a movie that is singularly focused in getting Chalamet the best actor supporting, uh, best actor performance, or if it's going to be a film that can kind of get a lot of acclaim. That's why right now, Edward Norton, he averages out to about 3.3 on all of that. Coming in at number eight, and I should just note right now, this is actually someone that I have locked into my personal 
Best Supporting Actor. I believe they will be in the top five, even though I only have them in eight right now. And this is a huge bet based on the performance slash screen time of the performance. I have Denzel Washington for Gladiator 2. When I did my rankings, Denzel Washington came in the highest of my averages. What's working in Denzel Washington's favor right now? Well, when I did the average, he averaged a 4.3 based on all the categories. I thought Studio Focus Paramount is going to be focusing in on this movie. In terms of narrative, both of his sons are probably going to get a lot of critical acclaim with the piano lesson, one of his sons directing it, one of his sons starring in it. So it could just be a Washington trio, this whole campaign trail. You also have Academy status. No one is more famous than Denzel Washington in Hollywood. He is of the elite elite where he is facing a little bit of a question mark right now. And that's why I gave him a 2.5 at screen time. We just don't know if he is truly a supporting performance or if we've really seen his whole performance in the trailer, but it is certainly one to circle. And I gave him a high with the bias of a five and it's just simply people love Denzel. And whenever he's in a movie, he is always a threat. So I gave him a high bias in terms of that. And that's why he has a five there. So those are my complete unknowns. Let's go over to the next one. I just mentioned uh, Washington. Let's do the piano lesson question mark. These are ones that I have questions on, and they're both performances from the piano lesson. First one coming in at number seven, I have Ray Fisher of Justice League fame, who is supposedly the best performance out of the piano lesson. I've heard he is, or I should say the best male performance out of the piano lesson. He seems to be getting the most acclaim. Uh, He ranks low on studio focus and narrative and academy status. I am giving him so much flack, and maybe this is unfair. All the Justice League headlines that happened, I think some people were rubbed the wrong way out of that. Personally, I think he was in the right, and I think he should advocate and fight for himself, but that makes you enemies in Hollywood, so I am knocking him a few points from that. I think he has to essentially may not have the good graces within Hollywood to get high on this list. However, screen time and buzziness, this performance is critically acclaimed, and he seems to be the really the main male supporting performance. The one who I think has a better shot at getting it, although you'll notice he gets knocked for the screen time is Samuel L. Jackson. What I've heard about the Samuel L. Jackson performance in the piano lesson is he's kind of just in the background. He does not have a lot of screen time, which I think is actively hurting him. That's why he has a chew here. Uh, In terms of bias, he's Samuel L. Jackson. He is one of these guys that is so well-respected in it. Now, I only gave him a four instead of a five. I think if he had a lot of screen time, he'd be a five all around, and he might even be the threat to win. Not sure about that. Everything else, narrative, he has a high one because he's last time he was nominated was for 1994 Pulp Fiction. So that's uh, another thing working in his favor. I just I don't feel confident on it. Coming in at number five, I have Yori Borisov for Honora. Reason I have it at number five is just because I believe there is a chance that Honora could kind of just get a ton of groundswell support. It seems to be one of the most critically acclaimed movies of this year. A lot of praise going towards it. A lot of people are seemingly enjoying it. This could be a film that I wouldn't be shocked if you just saw nine, 10, 11 nominations, et cetera, et cetera. And that is always a threat to then get a few just maybe surprise nominations or ones that people weren't expecting or some that seemed on the fringes. So I put Yori here just because it just kind of felt like if there was a groundswell of support for Nora that you could just see a lot of categories getting in from that support i don't know much about yori's performance i don't even know if he's in the film really enough to be in consideration coming in at number four i have kieran Culkin for a real pain this performance came out uh people got to see it at sundance beginning of this year including myself i was a little bit more mixed on the performance and not mixed it was just i didn't think it was as great as other people thought i thought it was a good performance i actually thought eisenberg gave the better performance uh what's favoring uh colkin he has the sticking power that was something that i wasn't sure about uh after sundance i just didn't know if there was going to be enough uh buzz for him to stay in conversation it's now september he still has that buzz and they are making a real push for it Uh, that's another thing that's in his favor studio focus searchlight they really only have a real pain and a complete unknown this year so they can put some focus on this movie uh and the other thing that is helping him out is screen time i saw the movie he is the co-lead of this movie 
it is a true co-lead performance, but in this case, they're putting him in supporting actor. He has the screen time and he has the big scenes in this movie that I could see it being in his favor. One thing I had a question on is Academy status. I get he's a big TV star from Succession. I don't know if he really has it outside of TV. This is really his first big movie performance. So that's where I'm also kind of questioning it. Uh, and so those are the crowd favorites, which brings us into three, two, and one. All three of these performances, I think, are going to get nominated. I should just mention that I did have Yori as my second nomination that I thought was going to happen. These are the three that I think are also going to happen. Coming in at number three, I have Jeremy Strong for The Apprentice, a movie that I will actually be able to review probably Tuesday. Uh, so I guess that would be the 24th. I'm not exactly sure what date that is, but that review should be coming out soon enough. Uh, the reason I have the apprentice jeremy strong performance him playing roy cohen so high is and i know i just mentioned the tv bias against uh colkin there is a respectability that strong just seems to have with his peers the way people talk about him and i know there's the method acting and all that that can get in his way i think he at least has it slightly better and a little bit more respect with people within hollywood than colkin does. that's why he's a 3.5 versus a three for that in terms of everything else, Studio Focus, this is the only movie this studio is trying to campaign for. And this seems to be the performance that everyone is seemingly gravitating towards or championing. Everything that I've heard about this performance is that it's great. I will be seeing the movie again soon enough. Uh, narrative, I think there's a really good narrative that could come out of this movie, uh, especially with the election this year. This could be a middle finger to Trump. And I think there is a chance the Academy could go for it. There's also, that's why it's only a four though, is because there's definitely a contingency of the Academy that won't want to dive into those waters. Uh, and then screen time and buzziness. I just gave him generally strong fours out of here. He seems to be kind of, again, the co-lead, the co the really the villain of this movie besides Trump. And he seems to be the one that, manipulates Trump into becoming the villain that he is portrayed in this movie. Just feel good about this performance. We'll see if it actually pans out. Number two, beloved actor in Stanley Tucci. This is the conclave nomination that I thought uh, would be happening. A lot of things working in favor of conclave focus features. This seems to be the film that they are championing narrative uh tucci's one of the most beloved actors you have a strong screen time presence he again seems to be the co-lead the only thing that i'm worried about with this movie is i keep hearing a lot about the fines performance and then some of the other supporting performances like isabella rossellini who's in the movie a little bit i am not hearing a ton on tucci I've heard good things about Tucci and that he's good in this movie. I haven't heard the overwhelming. Ray Fiennes, after the premiere, was like, oh yeah, Fiennes is definitely in contention. I haven't quite heard that narrative hit with Tucci, but I just think everything's working in his favor. He's a beloved actor. He's somebody who's paid his dues. He's been an Academy Award nominated and movies that have won. I just think Tucci's due for this. And then number one, the guy who I think is the front runner. This is honestly the guy that I think may win it all is Guy Pierce for The Brutalist. What's working in this uh, film's favor? The buzziness. I am hearing so much about the Guy Pierce performance specifically out of The Brutalist. One of the most critically acclaimed performances of the year, it seems. People are raving about The Brutalist, saying it's one of the best movies of the year. And people are spotlighting Brody and Pierce kind of saying that Pierce steals the movie. I kind of been getting flashbacks to Robert Downey Jr. last year for Oppenheimer. I just think there's a lot in this favor. So, you know, he has a high screen time. He has a high buzziness in that sense. Uh, Academy status. He's not quite the level of an Ed Norton, but he's, I think like the step below well-respected enough narrative. He's a guy that's never won. I don't even know if he's been nominated to be honest. I just, there's a lot working in his favor where it just feels like this could be the year. And if The Brutalist is as well received as it seemingly has been out of uh, TIFF and out of Venice, I just think there's a lot working in its favor. I'll just mention, because I didn't mention it, uh, Jeremy Strong averaged out at a four, uh, Stanley Tucci averaged out at a four, and Guy Pierce also averaged out at a four. So again, to wrap it up, my five that I think are going to get nominated, Yori Borisov for Anora. 
I have a, a Denzel Washington for Gladiator 2, Guy Pierce for The Brutalist, Stanley Tucci for Conclave, and Jeremy Strong for The Apprentice. And it looks like I did it in under time. So incredible job by me. We'll be doing this series as this Academy Award season continues to go along. And we'll be kind of reviewing. We'll be going back. I'll be making adjustments. I'll be making changes. So thank you for joining me. And I hope you guys start making your power rankings. I hope you tell me where I'm wrong because God, I know I am wrong. And I'll be back next week, either for best supporting actress or best actor. Not sure what I'm going to do yet. But if you like this series, make sure to like and subscribe for more.